All right, today I'd like to share more thoughts, concerns, and possibilities for the newest broadcast standard for over-the-air television in the U.S., ATSC 3.0, also marketed as next-gen television. The first point I want to tackle is the issue of the internet connection. Is it necessary for next-gen TV viewing, and if so, why? ATSC 3.0 or Next Gen TV is really a hybrid mixture of over the air broadcast signals and internet content, which is also known as OTT or over the top content. That's kind of a catch all term to describe any programming that's delivered over the internet. ATSC 3.0 does offer a lot of cool possibilities for the future of broadcast TV, such as the potential for interactive programs, enhanced emergency alerts, and additional localized online streaming content, such as weather, traffic reports, or even evacuation routes in the case of an emergency. Now, in the future, some of these features may actually be delivered through a method called data casting, which is another potential feature of ATSC 3.0. And basically what that is, it's a way of broadcasting data over the airwaves, over radio waves, as opposed to over the internet. Now, because the internet connection makes a two-way connection, sending and receiving information from the broadcaster and back to the broadcaster, that internet connection between you and your tuner is actually a way of for broadcasters to track individual viewer habits. It gives broadcasters the opportunity as well to deliver targeted ads to individual viewers, and that can certainly raise privacy concerns for some. They can watch your viewing habits a lot closer, that means. Targeting ads will be another source of huge revenue for broadcasters as well. In addition to the money they already earn from ads and commercials on over-the-air television and the massive amount of retransmission fees collected from cable companies for carriage of broadcaster-owned channels on cable and satellite services. With all that revenue on the line, it's really hard to imagine a free version of next-gen TV that will not require an internet connection of some kind in the future. At some point, I can't see broadcasters letting that targeted ad revenue go and still provide a free TV option to viewers. It is a possibility that an internet connection will be required to view any ATSC 3.0 or next-gen TV content at all once the standard is fully rolled out across the US. Viewers may have to bear the cost not only of an internet connection, but one that is fast enough for streaming video if they want to watch any free TV over the air at all. The other possibility remains that an over-the-air broadcast signal may be present, but without an internet connection, there won't be any way to take advantage of other features that the new standard next-gen TV offers for viewers. Another concern with the possible need for an internet connection is linked to the use of DRM encryption on ATSC 3.0 channels, which I'll discuss further in a little bit. Decryption keys are needed to view any encrypted ATSC 3.0 or next-gen TV signals, but the question remains, Will these decryption keys be allowed to simply live directly on your tuner or TV through a simple software update? Or will they need to be accessed or activated remotely through an internet connection every time you want to watch an ATSC 3.0 channel? Now I'd like to talk a little further about DRM or Digital Rights Management Encryption. This is definitely a hot button issue in the rollout of ATSC 3.0. Anybody familiar with satellite television encryption probably knows that piracy exists quite widely in the world of satellite TV. Illegal decryption keys for many forms of paid encryption methods are readily available and that allows anyone to view encrypted content with an unauthorized receiver. Now, while DRM encryption itself is not used for paid encryption, it's only used for content copyright protection to prevent the illegal rebroadcast of OTA content, but it's sort of like a locked door. It's only going to keep honest people out. 
There are several encryption systems that can be used for paid over-the-air services down the road, much like cable and satellite using encryption forms like PowerView, Erdetto, BIS, and DigiCypher. If DRM encryption can simply be imposed after the fact like it has been, making already released ATSC 3.0 tuners such as the HD Home Run and Zapper Box unusable in many US TV markets for watching next-gen TV broadcasts until the encryption keys can be delivered to these tuners through an online software update, then there's really no reason to think other encryption methods can't be imposed later in the same manner if broadcasters do get FCC approval to charge for over-the-air TV channels. It would be easy enough for broadcasters to change the signal parameters to encrypt certain channels and through a simple back-end software update, you can access the decryption keys after you pay for them. And with broadcasters only obligated to provide one main channel signal for free, such as NBC, CBS, Fox, or ABC, broadcasters are busy lobbying the FCC to speed up the eventual shutdown of the current broadcast standard that most over-the-air TV viewers are still using, ATSC 1.0. It's very concerning to think that DigiNets and subchannels that are currently enjoyed for free on ATSC 1.0 may one day be put behind a paywall. Free over-the-air television channel selections may be limited in the future, maybe only to main networks, a few religious and independent stations. I'm not saying that this is going to happen, but it is certainly a possibility. Broadcasters are very aware that some of their content is quote-unquote valuable, and they're going to want to try and maximize the return on their investment for that content. DRM encryption may also simply be a way of making it more of a hassle for viewers to access free over-the-air television, maybe in hopes that they'll just simply give up and just pay for cable or satellite. Remember those retransmission fees I mentioned earlier? Another consideration is the much more robust modulation system that delivers ATSC 3.0. It's much more resistant to interference, uses available bandwidth much more efficiently, and it's also useful for mobile applications, as opposed to the fragile modulation system used to deliver ATSC 1.0 signals. The more robust modulation system used to deliver ATSC 3.0 signals is much more reminiscent of the type of signal reliability one would expect from a paid service like cable or satellite. My hope for ATSC 3.0 is that it remains primarily a broadcast service that provides free over-the-air television for all Americans, regardless of whether or not they have an internet connection. There are still large areas of rural America and rural Canada, for that matter, that do not have reliable internet service, let alone internet that's capable of speeds that are needed for streaming video. I think the FCC has to ensure that broadcasters strike a balance between providing an over-the-air television broadcast system that is both free and accessible to all Americans and at the same time profitable, but it is up to the FCC to make sure they fulfill their mandate. And their primary mandate is to act in the best interests of the public, first and foremost. Anyways, this video is just more of my thoughts and concerns on ATSC 3.0, also known as Next Gen TV. If you think I'm way off base or agree or disagree, feel free to leave a comment below.